Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the catastrophic malfunctions you, you will see on the range or uh, in a tactical environment. Uh, a quick story about myself is uh, 2006, 2007 in uh, Baghdad, we went, uh, we did a uh, Gila Born operation uh, up near the uh, the city of Karbala to capture an HVT. I had my uh, my Stoner SR25 on my back, and uh, I come running out of the back of the uh, CH53 helicopter. Awesome, we're running through clearing buildings, doing our thing, getting a firefight. I get up on a rooftop, pop on my night vision get on the scope and all of a sudden I realize my reticle's laying in the bottom of my tube. That's when everything, world starts to become pretty dark. Sometimes you can't avoid it, so sometimes uh, stuff just happens. Uh, but there are, there's a lot of things you can do to mitigate that kind of stuff happening. And uh, knowledge of your firearm goes a long ways and how to, how to put it together properly, so on and so forth. One of the big things that I see on the range, and I've seen a lot here lately for some reason, is people using Loctite on their scope rings to, to make sure that the, the, the scope rings don't come loose, which happens a lot if you don't torque them properly. People are using Loctite on their rings, blue Loctite, thinking that's the right thing to do, but what they don't realize is it causes a hydrodynamic wedge and you can crush the tube of your scope. And once the tube of your scope is crushed, I, I think we all know that at that point, it's just nothing but uh, hot garbage. Also guys, the, especially guys like me in the military, we do a lot of holdovers using uh, um, MRAD reticles and guys forget that your elevation and your windage knobs, sometimes they need to be exercised. And the minute you go to turn that thing, if you haven't turned it in a while, you can snap the elevators up pretty easy. I've seen, I just saw it happen out at a match uh, out in Wyoming. You have to exercise your scope, your, your scope turrets. Uh, I'd recommend doing it often, just back and forth slowly, bring it back to zero and everything, go out and shoot it, make sure it's still zero. Everything should be good. Another catastrophic event that uh, I've seen a couple of here lately is rifle, rifles that are come out of bed or not bedded properly. Guys either over torque them, they don't put the, they don't, the, with the bedding block, they don't get them in there right. Uh, there's a myriad of different things you, that can go wrong and it's typically guys that don't know what they're doing that won't ask somebody how to do it properly. If you're shooting and you're going, you're shooting a half inch group at hundred yards, all of a sudden it spreads out to three inches something catastrophic has gone wrong. First place usually to start is I, I stop top to bottom. I, I go from my scope rings to my scope, down to my barrels and start looking at uh, you know how it's bedded and everything else and just kind of work your way from top to bottom. That's usually the easiest way to go because your problems are generally always going to be in your optics. And, but with the resurgence of the 6.5 Creedmoor and some of these other super hot burning rounds, guys don't realize that your barrels can burn out fast. Your throats get scorched because those bullets are coming a lot faster than a 308, a lot hotter. Barrel life is about a third of what it, can, what it is for a 308 or something similar. So guys will see that spread out and, and they won't know what's going on. They think it's them. They lose the confidence in themselves. And uh, once again, a little bit of knowledge goes a long ways. If you have something like that happen, and you can't figure it out, contact someone that knows what they're doing. That's all you gotta do. Pretty easy to diagnose based on the symptoms. And just make sure that you stay at those torque specs. Don't, or don't tighten them up until they start to shear and then back them off a quarter turn like an old Harley. Make sure you always follow the settings that the manufacturer recommend. They're there for a reason. Catastrophic events on the range, uh, always a good time. You know, fun problems to work through, especially for you tactical guys. Make sure you PMCS, pre-mission check all your stuff before you go out because your life depends on it. I'm Todd Van Langen. Long Range Ambassador for Breda USA representing Saco and Tika. Remember, there's no such thing as advanced shooting. There's just the mastery of the fundamentals.